Oh, this renunciant has a very noble appearance, fitting to be a great man. Here in Kuru, it's very hard to find a husband suitable for my daughter, Magandia. But today I found one. Venerable sir, my name is Magandia. I have a daughter who I would like to get married. But here in Kuru, I can find no suitable husband. And then I saw you today. I am very pleased by your appearance. Please accept my daughter as your wife. Oh, and don't worry that she's ugly or unattractive. There's nobody in this whole country more beautiful than Magandia. Please wait here. Oh, my, my dear child, Magandia. Oh, I'm exhausted. Hurry up. Make yourself as attractive as you can. Now, right now. Quickly, my daughter. If you're tired, then sit down and take a rest, husband. And why do you want our daughter, Makandia, to dress up prettily? Come on, please. Sit down and rest? No! Makandia, are you ready yet? Hurry up! I'm ready, father. Right, right. Go quickly. I've met him. I've met him. <laughs> met who? I met him. Hey, where's he gone? What's this all about? Oh, you've brought me all this way and I still don't know what you're talking about. I've met our daughter's future husband. That's what I'm talking about. I told him to wait for me here, but he's disappeared. Ah, there, you see? His footprints are still there. You're knowledgeable in the texts dealing with the interpretation of footprints. Have a look at them. Hmm. Two footprints that exactly match in this way are the footprints of a great being. They show that he is beyond craving, beyond anger, beyond delusion, without defilement. Such a one is not interested in household life. <laughs> no defilement? What, every man likes beautiful women? Let's see what happens when he sees our daughter. The main thing is to find where he's gone to. Oh, over there! I found him! Quickly, wife! Magandia, hurry! Follow your father! Venerable sir! Venerable sir! Venerable sir, this is my wife, and this is my daughter, Magandia, who I am going to offer to you. Brahmins, I rejected sensual pleasure on the day of my enlightenment. I've seen the root cause of your existence, karma. You arise from sensual thoughts. Those thoughts arise in me no longer. Your karma will appear no more. Brahmins, listen to this teaching. The wise person must put effort into raising his mind out of attachment to sensuality, freeing himself from Mara's snare, steadying himself with the hook of mindfulness he is able to master himself. He is able to have victory over himself. Your teachings have illuminated the path ahead for us both.
Law, do not hold it against our daughter. Magandia is still very young. We ask permission to go to my younger brother, to give him all my wealth, and ask him to take over as guardian of our daughter. As for my wife and me, we will ask permission to join the monastic order, so that we may, in time, realize enlightenment. Uttara, why did you send someone to ask for such a large sum of money from your father? I am your husband. I would have given it to you myself. There was no need to bother your father. Dear husband, since our marriage I have had little opportunity to make merit. I wanted the money to buy food to offer to the Lord Buddha and his disciples. I asked my father for the money because he shares my faith in the Lord Buddha. It's not, you see, that I have no wish to accept your money, good husband. In that case, let it be as you wish. My intention is to prepare the food myself and invite the Lord Buddha and his disciples to receive food in our house for fifteen days. In that case... Let it be as you wish. And I am afraid that during that time I will be unable to perform all my wifely duties. In that case, let it be as you wish. I've heard that here in Rajkir there is a courtesan called Sirima, whose beauty is renowned throughout the city, although few men get to enjoy her charms because her fee is so high. For these fifteen days, I am going to hire Sirima to take my place as your wife. Uh, uh, in that case, um, uh, uh, let it be um, as you wish. Miss Sirima. Look at her. Instead of letting others do the work, she's doing it all herself. Her face is dirty, her clothes are all soiled. She should be relaxing in a way fitting of her station, and instead she's finding ways of tiring herself out. Look at him. How heedless and indulgent he is. He thinks he's so rich that he has no need to make merit? Ah, oh, how very foolish he is. Look at Utara. She's looking at me with a smile of contempt. It's as if she's scolding me with her eyes. It's sickening. I'm not putting up with this. You. You. Utara, look at me. You want to fight? Well, you're going to get what you want. Sirima, I owe you a debt of gratitude because you agreed to take over my place as wife temporarily, allowing me to fulfill my wish to make merit. No matter how you treat me, I will not become angry or vindictive. Why is this 
boiling water unable to hurt her. Hey! This prostitute is dared to attack our employer! Come on! Let's get her! Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get her! Come on, guys! Let's go! Let's go. Let's go. All of you, don't hurt her. Sirima is like a friend to whom I owe a debt of gratitude. I am not angry with her. Utara, I am a courtesan who you employed. I forgot myself and started imagining myself as your husband's wife, and so attacked you. But your heart is so noble. It is filled with loving kindness, and you have not shown me even the slightest amount of anger. I have wronged you. Please, forgive me. Oh, get up, Sirima. If you want to ask for forgiveness, then you should ask it from the Lord Buddha, whom I revere above all others. Tomorrow I will have completed fifteen days of offerings. Please, come and offer food and listen to the Dhamma with me. A person should overcome anger with non-anger, overcome evil with goodness, overcome stinginess with generosity, overcome careless speech with words of truth. Those engrossed in worldly enjoyments, indulging in sense pleasures, intoxicated by wealth, social standing, extravagance, praise, rank, prestige, and power, cannot see the noble beauty of truth. Oh, she's still so young and beautiful, too young to die. The day this woman listened to a talk from the Buddha, she gave up her life as a courtesan and turned to making merit every day. Mm. But life is uncertain, and now, not much later on, she's dead. Uh, let's get down to work. It's already time to cremate the body. Hey, wait a minute. We can't cremate uh, her yet. Well, why not? The Buddha has requested King Bimbisara to order us to keep the body for three days. Uh. For three days. Oh, whatever for? When Sirima led her life as a courtesan, all the men in Rajjir were infatuated with her. Everyone wanted to sleep with her. Now she is dead. I would like to sell her to the highest price. I will start at the price she charged for her body during her lifetime. One thousand kahapanas. Who wants to start the bidding? Now, Sirima's been dead for three days. Her corpse is starting to decay. The fluids are flowing out of her body. The smell of the corpse fills the whole cemetery. Somebody would have to be crazy to buy exactly. the body. Hey, King Bimisar is reducing the price to 900 kahapanas. 800! Ha ha! 800 kahapanas for a rotten yeah, 700! Half the original price and still no one is making a move! One hundred kahapanas. If nobody is going to buy this corpse, then I will give it away. For free!
it is the nature of all conditions to arise, persist for a while, and then pass away. Investigate the impermanence of all conditioned phenomena. The tears of beings wandering through samsara are beyond measure. The bones which are laid down upon this earth cover it without gaps. This is something that is truly sobering to know. One who is still attached to forms, sounds, tastes, odors, and physical sensations cannot find liberation from this world.